Happy Saturday, and welcome. Gotta knock this quick episode out. Uploaded one yesterday, and, um, you know, some crazy shit happened since then. So, here we are again. Quick episode. Uh, Yesterday, Duke played a basketball game. You probably know that. And uh, it was not pretty in the first half, or for most of the second half, to be honest. Texas came out. You know, looking like a ranked team. I think they should be ranked. That's that's obvious. Duke came out looking not like the number one team. If you hear in the last episode, I said it's possible they're going to come out fatigued, come out tired, you know, whatever it is. And we're seeing a reoccurring thing with this team is starting slower and slower every game. But they're also growing up an exponential amount every game. So, there's good and bad. Uh, First half, definitely all bad. Quick three fouls for Grayson Allen. Some terrible turnovers. No rebounding. No second chance points. No inside presence. And it was just like, wow. Are these Texas big men this good? Mohamed Bamba's this good? I mean, he's not putting up the numbers, but we're not doing anything. And I was just like, well, time to, as I say many times, time to go get their ass chewed out in, the, in halftime, come back out and look like a completely different team. But even in the second half came out, a little spark, a little spark, but then it would get countered. You know, that Kevin Roach, is that his name, whatever, acting like a just – you know, he dunked on Javin. It was a nice dunk. Did it warrant 35 headlines and four ESPN alerts? No. I mean, everyone dunks. I just think, like, you know, Grayson Allen dunked. only thing you hear about Grayson Allen's dunk is from Duke Twitter accounts and Duke fans. Somebody dunks on Duke. Mm, you know, it's like, the national headline on CNN. I mean, okay, I guess. So that happened, and, you know, things weren't looking too good, and uh, Texas ultimately gets up by 16 points pretty far into the second half. (coughs) You know. At that point, did I think Duke was going to take their first loss? I was still holding out a little hope. But I was trying to talk myself into being okay with them losing a game that they should have won. I was like, oh, you know, I I said that they would be fatigued and and there was a good chance that, that these things could happen uh, with the travel and being beat up, and I was just, you know, kind of starting to make excuses in my head. But at the same time, I was like, a quick bucket here, a quick bucket there. They're back in it, and and you just don't know. And that started happening, and it's fueled by a big second half in Grayson Allen and a gigantic second half for Marvin Bagley. She got some key help from Wendell Carter here and there. I love when he gets the ball down low or he gets a rebound right under the basket. And instead of being like so many others, you know, pump faking, uh, going up twice, trying to do a layup from their hip, he goes right the fuck up over the rim and just dunks the shit out of it with ferocious force and screams and yells and flexes on everybody I'm so happy we have that this year same from Marvin Bagley I'm just so happy about it every time that happens I'm like I'm thankful <laughs> so those things Grayson Allen coming in running the point uh you know Duval, what do you have six turnovers you know two for nine he blamed the T-shirt, uh, so not a great game for him. 
And you could kind of see that in the pace of the game. But he was being a pest on defense in the backcourt. Three steals, he was always uh, making them be aware that he was there. I really liked seeing that. That was cool. But in that second half, when that little run happened for Duke, it wasn't a little run. It was six biggest comeback of all time. So it was a huge run. You know, O'Connell did some big things as far as saving the ball out of bounds and and getting a few tips and whatnot. And, you know, Wendell Carter and Marvin Bagley, they just became Wendell Carter and Marvin Bagley, uh, you know, best big man duo in college basketball. And Grayson Allen kind of took over the point. He hit a big three. Uh, That was huge. And he got it to Bagley and ran the pick and roll a little bit. And then they really locked in on defense. That's another thing. And when that game pressure got put on Texas, they were shook. They looked like, oh, shit, we had it. How do we let it get this close? Like, what do we do? What do we do? Here, you take it. You take it. Oh, shit. And, you know, those things, they missed a dunk, missed a layup, missed a free throw. It was – they helped Duke come back because they were shook. But at the same time, Duke locked in on defense. If Duke doesn't lock in on defense in that run, then, you know, they get some more wide-open dunks, some more – you know, whatever they were hitting threes too. I mean, it was it was whatever. It was bullshit. But <laughs> they did shoot four for twenty three from three, so not great at all. But they were falling at random times where I was like, "Are you serious, dude?" Again, Duke from three, three for eighteen. That's not good, but. They really stepped it up in the second and in overtime. Ended up with 18 offensive rebounds, you know, 50 rebounds overall. Ended up winning the rebound in battle. And that was huge, and that's another reason why what happened happened. Um, But like I said, big things from Gary Trent in the second half. Uh, That layup at the end of regulation with getting smacked right in the face finishing through contact, hitting the free throw, that was huge. You know, when he was at the free throw line, I was so happy that it was him because I just felt like he's got it, you know, to where some others, you know, free throws, uh, they're a little hard to come by, you know. We missed 11 or 12 in regulation alone, I think. Um, And missed 14 free throws overall. So, you know, when they're down by 10 or whatever, it's like if they would have hit their free throws, they'd be winning right now. And things like that just drive me nuts. I know you can't shoot 100% from the line, but when you see those statistics and you look at the score, you're like, oh, my God, the free throws. We're losing because we didn't hit free throws. Amongst many other things that you could tell the coaching staff was not in the least bit happy about. But – you know, it's a young team. There was five freshmen playing in overtime. So this tournament, I think, is huge for the growth and learning and maturity of this team. Grayson Allen fouled out, and and I know everyone was like, damn, because he was kind of fueling that run. He he wasn't scoring every play, but he was, he was kind of – I like seeing him group everyone together. I liked seeing him um, talk. Even when he was on the bench, he was telling everyone huddle. He was telling everyone get together. Uh, He was hyping everybody up, telling everybody, you're good, you're good, we're good, we're all good. And that was huge to see from him where he's been so quiet in the past as a player, a person he's been shy. So seeing that was huge. Um, Also just seeing the ferociousness of Bagley, like when he hit some shots and they were down 12 or 10 or 8 and – Texas took a timeout, you know, he's screaming, he's going crazy, he's flexing. Like, that was big to see because it lets me know that 
He's not there just to put up stats. He's there to fucking compete and win. And you could tell everyone wanted to win so bad. And I'll, you know, I've said that five times in the past five episodes, but you can tell, like you can tell no one's selfish. They all want to win and they're going to compete to the end. The slow starting thing, I don't really know what's up with that. But I hope it levels out a little bit. I mean, it's just, it's almost like night and day. Um, it just seems like the energy isn't really there or, you know, it's like, wake up, but it is what it is. I mean, those things are going to happen at certain times. You know, people are going to have shooting slumps. People are going to have bad games. Like, I get everyone roasting a player when they have a bad game and saying, this person needs to start over this person, but I mean... You don't need to have a short-term memory as far as bad games. People are going to have bad games. You know, Grayson's had some subpar games. Gary Trent's had some subpar games. Duvall had a subpar game. Um, But, you know, they also are key pieces. They also have great games. They also have outstanding games. And, you know, one bad game, that doesn't mean someone's terrible. You just have to make adjustments for the flow and the situations of this game and then worry about the next game and the next uh, situations when it comes. So Duvall wasn't having a great game, so he went to the bench. Allen ran the point. O'Connell put in 29 minutes, had a – you know, a f- he didn't make that big of a difference in the scoring aspect this time, but he made some big plays. I almost thought he had that tip in um, at the end of regulation when Bagley took that three, which another thing is Bagley should have drove or they should have ran it to him in the post or something because it would have anything would have been better than that three. If it would have went in, I'd be saying probably the same thing, but I'd be saying I'm damn glad it went in. But even though when it went to overtime, I felt good about it. Uh, Bomba fouling out and their other big was fouled out right after that. I felt good. But there's always a chance the the team that should win doesn't always win. Um, Another thing is when Duvall fouled, I guess it was Roach, at the end of regulation after Trent hit that and won, if you look back at it, Trent was talking mad shit to Roach while he was at the free throw line. Maybe it was when Trent fouled Roach in overtime. I'm not sure, but whenever it happened, it might have been both times. It was both times. Trent was talking so much shit to him at the line. And I love seeing that. Like, you could tell he was talking to him the same way Jay Williams and uh, Chris Duhon and all of those dogs back in the day used to talk to the free throw shooters and used to talk trash and be in everybody's ear. You know, Trent gives a little nudge here, gives a little push here. People, you know, they want to get in his face, but he just mad dogs him and he's just like, what, like, what are you going to do? And in a comeback and in in a tight game, when the pressure's on, that's so – I just think that's such a great aspect for this team. And, you know, he missed – on one of them, he missed one free throw, which if he would have made them both, they would have had the lead. And in the other situation, he missed both of them. You know, Trent was talking to him the whole time. Trent was uh, getting in his head. He was talking back and forth to the Duke players, like probably talking about how he's not going to hit the free throws. Did that is that what made the difference or was it the pressure or was it a combination? I don't know, but it didn't hurt anything, I know that. So really like seeing that. And um that huge play that that layup that he had coming on the you know, cutting down the middle, finishing through contact, getting the and one, that was so big. 
And uh, he had a good game, you know, 17 points, eight rebounds, three assists. He put in huge minutes. So that was good to see from him. You know, he's had a, a few shaky games. And his shot still wasn't falling from deep, but shoot or shoot, they're going to fall. And then, I mean, you know, Bagley and Carter, just thank you. That's all I know to say. You know, Bagley with – 34 and 15. First freshman in Duke history to record a 30 and 15 game. Only the second by any player under Coach K. Christian Leitner, 33 and 16 versus Maryland in 1992. Also, he tied the Duke freshman scoring record. 34 points, you know, J.J. Reddick, the only other person to score 34 versus Virginia in 2003. If that doesn't speak to the magnitude of what this guy is, like we're we're seeing something that we're probably not going to see again for a long time, maybe ever, and with the combination of talent around him and this is still happening, like, you got to understand this is something that it doesn't ever happen. Like, I just hope they take advantage of it. You know, I hope everything works out the way that we're hoping it to work out and a national championship comes our way. Um, But just such a ginormous game, you know, They were down 16 with 11 minutes left. And it just looked like all the momentum was gone and everyone was ready to lose. And then, boom, boom, boom. Oh, my God. It's eight. And then the life was there and you just knew. Like, this team, it just seems like they turn it on at the last second and that's all they need is one second. I mean... You know, when they were down two in the past years, I felt like, oh, my God, it's a mile. Like, what are the chances that – because you think somebody's going to have to create on their own, somebody's going to have to pull up from mid-range or from three, and what are the chances that goes in, you know, 60-40, 50-50? It just felt like in the past, oh, we're down two. This year it feels like, oh, we're down two. (laughs) <laughs> give us the ball. Like, we got the ball? Okay, straight, that's straight. Like, <laughs> throw it down in the post. Somebody's going to make a crazy post move and make it. If not, the rebound is right there. Come down with it. Carter dunk. Bagley post move. Hook shot. Like, it was just crazy. And, you know, Grayson fouled out. Duvall had to come in, made some big plays. Had that alley-oop to Bagley behind the zone uh, when Texas went zone. And had another one was basically the exact same play. And Bagley came down with it and dunked it. And, you know, it was huge. So everyone, everyone just came together in that last 11 minutes plus overtime. And I just... We were just so happy. I was just screaming. I was acting stupid. I was tweeting in all caps, which is probably extremely annoying, but I can't help it. Um, seeing that, it was, just, it was just like, yes. Not only was this another good learning experience, but they came away with the win. So, you know, that was good. I'm, I'm stoked. And then, you know, that game was crazy. But I swear... You know, Duke has to go play the winner of Gonzaga and Florida. They're playing at 11 right after Duke. So, I'm like, cool, we get to see a little look of what these teams look like and who Duke has to face on Sunday at 1030. Well, that game was crazier than the Duke game, which I didn't think was possible, but it was. It was crazier than the Duke game. It went to double overtime, you know, This little Chioza guy for Florida, he played 46 minutes, had 26 points, 10 assists, 8 rebounds. He's like 5'8". 
gave it his all. He was so hurt after he had to be basically carried off. And that's a monster game. He's a, he's a problem to match up with. And then, you know, Hudson for Florida, eight threes, 35 points. You know, Florida hit 17 threes. So that's something that Duke's going to have to deal with. Um, especially if they play man and if they play zone, that's going to be another problem. So it will be interesting to see what they do. Which it's not a problem of they can't play man. It's the problem of these are young guys that haven't had to play that much of defense for a long period of time in high school and AAU. That's what it is. Young teams aren't used to playing good defense. That's it. For those of you saying, I don't get why Duke can't play man, it's a learning curve for them. So Florida just, that game was back and forth. It seemed like whoever had the ball last was going to win. Well, Gonzaga had the ball last, and it didn't work out for them. So they went into overtime. I think Gonzaga had the ball last again. Didn't work out again. Uh, and one, and one, and one. It was back and forth. It was it was crazy. Double OT and Florida just hit like four threes in a row, and it was over. So Duke's going to have to play them. I think they're a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. I think that's Florida's potential. Uh, a lot of shooters, a lot of athletic people, a lot of um, energy, and some experience as well. So, you know, their coach is also Duke's athletic director's son. So that's a little interesting tidbit to this. Did I just say tidbit? What the fuck? But, you know, I'm giving Duke the advantage. I think they're going to come in. I think they're going to I think they're going to start hot or at least up to par with what Duke should start as and I think it'll be a great game back and forth. Um I think this could be a really back and forth close game and I think it's going to come down to can Duke defend the perimeter against Florida. You know, this team has a bunch of players that can drive and dish. The defense can collapse, kick it out to a shooter, or will we be too lazy to move our feet, speaking for Duke, and foul a lot and get in foul trouble? That can happen too. So it's going to be a big test for Duvall, Grayson, Gary Trent, and Alex O'Connell. Uh, see how they defend the perimeter. I'm interested to see it. You know, O'Connell, he's not great in man. He doesn't move his feet, and people go right around him. So, you know, he's lengthy. He can he can make up for it, but it's going to be interesting to see. It really is. So I'm super excited for that game, you know. It's 10.30 p.m. on a Sunday, so get your red eyes ready. It's going to be a vamp. And until then, everyone will just continue speculating and and talking about this crazy comeback. Like I said, Texas is underrated, that's for sure. And Marvin Bagley is a fucking unicorn, that's for sure. Big thing is, you know, like I said, perimeter defense against this uh, Florida team. But when they shoot, if it misses, got to rebound it. And for our offense, I would love to see more pick and roll. I would love to see either Grayson and Bagley or Duvall and Bagley pick and roll, put Trent and O'Connell on the wings, pick and roll, like – it's so annoying when their main goal is to get it to Bagley and they can't figure out how to get it down there to him. The pick and roll with Allen was working well. And, you know, you just need to see more of it instead of the stagnant create-your-own-shot offense that I saw a lot of, which you should never see with this team. So we'll see what happens with that. But, you know, got to defend, got to rebound, and got to take good shots which means get the ball to Bagley and Carter. And if they double, make passes out of it and knock down the shots. Or reset, you know, or play the high-low, whatever you want to do. Anyways, though, that Texas game was one 
for the ages and uh it was a great one to watch if you gave up on the team and was accepting defeat you get a pass on that one but i just feel like you can never count this team out the one problem was when we were down that when we were down that much 16 with 11 to go i was like well you know we're not going to shoot our way back into it <laughs> because in the past it's like the way you come back is knock down a three, you know, Kennard three, Grayson three, Frank three, Kennard three, Grayson three. Oh, my God, we're all of a sudden back in it. But they did it by efficient scoring, some and ones, and some good defense and second-chance points, which I'm not mad at that style to come back either. I'd rather never be losing, though, so that would be nice. Um, but, yeah, we're going to see, you know, Florida, they had a double OT game, crazy back and forth. They looked like they got beat to hell. And Duke, you know, it was a physical game, but nowhere near as bad as that Florida game. So, And then you got UNC and Michigan State. Eh, that side of the bracket was kind of trash. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, that's that. And, uh, we'll be back after the Florida game, championship game. Go Duke. Presley will be on the next episode. You know, these sporadic back-to-back games and everything. I'm just trying to knock these out at any chance I get. So if you get something out of this, appreciate it. If you don't, whatever. But Presley will be on the next episode, so yay. Appreciate everyone. Go Duke. This season just continues to deliver phenomenal statistics and games and outcomes and plays. And if you want to play that Kevin Roach highlight, that's fine, but they took the L, so LOL. Um, You know, every Duke hater was, they were so mad checking the score. Oh, they're going to lose. I get to tweet some shit. Yeah, you don't though. You probably did. They probably tweeted stuff anyways, but probably deleted it because it was invalid. You know, it just it didn't come to fruition the way that they hoped. It would be nice if Michigan State thrashes UNC. I think UNC is the favorite, but we'll see. I think that could go either way. Appreciate everyone. Happy Saturday. Happy weekend. Reach out. Say hello. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, no foul trouble this Sunday. Until then, I'm out.